Hi there. I'm going to talk tonight about hopelessness. The place that we get sometimes when we don't think the situation or the circumstance is going to get ever get any better, or there's nothing we can do about it, or it's only going to get worse. Hopelessness, I think, is feeling like the pain and the problem is never going to end or we can't handle it anymore. And I believe it's one of the leading causes of <coughs> depression and suicide. <coughs> and that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is hopelessness. My name is Sue Barnhart. I am one of the ministers at the Worship Center Ministries here in Northern Illinois. And this is Friday's Hope. Friday's Hope is all about giving people hope in their life for today and every day, for everyone, everywhere, regardless of the situation or the circumstance you're going through. So Friday's Hope, here we go. I'm sent a lot of things to read because they know that I do this. And a friend of mine sent a, a lecture about depression and hopelessness. And many times they run together. When we're depressed, we kind of think that things are never going to get better. Or when we end up being hopeless, we kind of end up depressed too. And uh, talked about the difference of it. But <clears throat> talked about we can be depressed, you know, we can struggle with depression. But when we get to a place where we feel like there's no hope, like we're hopeless, then we're in a very dangerous, dangerous place in our mental health. So let's talk about that today and what we can do to change that and to bring hope back into our lives. It's interesting, I looked up in the Bible, of course you know me, I research everything scientifically as well as uh, biblically, and I looked up in the Bible about hopelessness, and the only time it talks about losing hope is when the people walked away from God's plan and refused to walk according to God's ways. Isn't that interesting? His ways are not my ways, and his thoughts are not my thoughts. And so many times, uh, again and again, when we walk away from his plan, then we're trying to do it on our own without any power or any ability, and we usually end up at the dead end. We usually end up making a mess of things, and we... Um, we end up losing hope. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you tonight, honey. <clears throat> so when we've walked away from God's plan, but God shows time and again, if we return to him, if we return to him, there's hope. Returning to him means believing him, believing in his plan, believing he has the power to do this, to help us through, believing in the fact that he loves us enough to do this, Believing that the situation he's going to get us through it or he's going to change it or he's going to show us a better way to do things. And so believing in him when we walk back, when we go back to him, it's about believing in what he says, believing in what he promises. And there are over 7,000 promises of God in the Bible. So if he gives us that many promises... That must mean that he knows how to take care of us. Then I went to Webster's Dictionary. And it defines hopelessness as having no expectation of good or ex success. Despairing. Feeling alone. Doctors say his condition is hopeless. Incapable of redemption or improvement. Giving no reason to expect anything good. Giving no ground for hope. Desperate. Impossible. Despondent. Despairing. Desperate. 
mean having lost all hope or nearly all hope. It implies a deep rejection inside of us. And that prompts reckless action and violence sometimes in the face of defeat and frustration. Hopelessness suggests despair and the cessation of effort or resistance and often implies acceptance or resignation. Now, acceptance and resignation, if you're simply walking in what God's wanting you to do, isn't such a bad thing. That's called submission. But when we just accept and we stop fighting, we stop doing what we need to do to take care of life, that's when we're in trouble. After I read all these uh, definitions of, of uh, hopelessness, I started feeling despondent. They're pretty scary when you think about how badly we can really feel, um, d you know, just hopeless and, and how bad we feel when we feel like the situation is bigger than us or that we can't get through this. And then there's the realist in me that says, okay, situation may not change. I've had those things happen or maybe there isn't a way out. I've had that happen too. Or maybe the healing isn't going to happen. Okay. And then that thought can scare us too if we're thinking we got to live with this. But even in that, even in that, God can help us get through time and again. Time and again. I had a situation not too long ago that was devastating to me. There was nothing I could do about it. And the situation showed up in my face almost every day. It was very difficult, very much struggling. It, the situation broke my heart. There was nothing I could do about it, and I had to deal with it sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis. Very difficult. Because I wanted it to change. I wanted the situation to go back to what it was. I wanted the situation to be better for me. Not a thing I could do. I had to pray. I had to tell God how bad I hurt. I had to tell God, you know what? I don't want to live this. I don't want to do this. This hurts too much. And then I said, God, I don't like thinking like this. I need your help. And he was able to help me walk through the situation. Did the situation change? Nope. Did I change? Yep. God brought that situation still there, still active, but I'm not struggling with it anymore, and I'm not affected by it anymore. Every once in a while, a little tweet comes along, but usually I'm not affected by it anymore. So there are those thoughts, you know, look at the people that have had to deal with war. Their, their place is gone. Look at the people who have had to deal with the weather. Their place is gone. How you deal with that when you go and look at that? Day after day, bombs happening. Day after day, horrible weather, fires. How do you deal with that? There's nothing you can do about it. Except we all have a way out through Jesus. We all have a way to get through a situation with Jesus. See, he's bigger than all that. He's bigger than anything we are going through. And his love for us is bigger than anything we're going through. See, he wants to help. He wants to help us more than we want to ask sometimes. We still want at least me. I want to try and fix it on my own, and I can't. I cannot fix those things. I can't deal with them day after day either. Look, things sometimes things come along day after day. I can't deal with them, not on my own. And he wants to help us with everything as we go through you know, it says in in uh, Psalm 23, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Hello. We're going to be in struggles. We're going to have pain. We're going to watch other people go through pain. Maybe our kids, our adult kids, our little kids. But guess what? Jesus is bigger than all of that. Hey, Shay, nice seeing you, honey. Glad you're on here. So we're talking about, just to bring everybody up to speed, we're talking about hopelessness and depression. We're talking about uh, 
being so despondent that we don't want to go on. And then what happens if the situation doesn't get any better? What happens if it doesn't, uh, doesn't get any better and we still have to walk through it? And we just said the greatest sentence, we have Jesus who will get us through. He's bigger than anything we're going through. He's greater and he loves us. His love for us is bigger than anything that we're going through, that anything we have to go through, even if we have to walk through it day in and day out, he's bigger. That's where our hope is. That's where our hope comes from is Jesus, who's bigger and more loving than anything that we might feel hopeless about. Is there anybody on here tonight that feels hopeless? We don't have to. We have a Jesus who loves us. We have Jesus who's greater. He, we have a Jesus who wants to walk with us. He says, come to me, who all you who are what? Weary and heavy laden. Sometimes that weary and heavy laden is all day, every day. We don't have to live with that. On our own, we can go to Jesus and tell him, and he will pick us up and help us through. Oh, and guess what? We can even tell them we're, hope, we're feeling hopeless. We can tell them the bottom heart, the bottom of our heart. And he doesn't get upset. And he doesn't say, well, you shouldn't be feeling like that or anything else. He simply says, come on, child. I'll help you through. I'll give you a new perspective. I was talking about a situation I went through that I could not do anything about. And it hurt very deeply. And he gave me a new perspective. And he healed my heart. And he got me through. So we don't have to be despondent. And it takes time, guys. It takes time to walk through some of this stuff. Especially if it's still happening to you. You know, the people that are in war, they still have bombs flying over top of their head. And their, their houses are gone. The people who are dealing with weather, I just saw um, God is good all the time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the, uh, the, they just saw this fire that started out on the east coast uh, of the United States. I think it was the east coast. Just out of nowhere. Already taken out homes. Thanksgiving. And they ended up with no home. God will get them through. God, Jesus can help them through every single minute of disaster. Got a health issue that you're still living with? I get it. Been there, done that. Right now I'm doing it. Jesus will help you get through it every single time. Every single time. So I'm just going to give you some verses tonight. Um, it's the day after Thanksgiving. We're all running around in a bit of a food coma. I woke up this morning going, I think I want to take a nap already. So I'm going to share some verses with you. I want you to just grab a hold of these for yourself and continue to hang on to them for you. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Well, it's not all of them, but praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of, hear this, compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts those of us in all our trouble. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of all comfort. And he comforts us in all our troubles. It doesn't say he's going to pick this trouble or that trouble. It doesn't matter. If you listen to Pastor Cole long enough on Facebook, you'll find out God doesn't care about all that. He just wants us to come to him and he wants to heal us and make us whole, make us a new creature in Christ. Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? We've heard this in many contexts, but this is different. If we're going through depression, if we're going through hopelessness, is that going to separate us from the love of Christ? No. No. Trouble or hardship or persecution Famine, nakedness, danger, sword, nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. Not even our own hopelessness. Because he says, I have hope for you. 
God's love is stronger than the pains of this world. Hi, Norma. Good seeing you, honey. Um, God's love is stronger than the pains of this world. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. How many times have we cried and felt like there was nobody there? Or cried out, no, he's there. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. You know what that slimy pit is that we're talking about tonight? Depression, hopelessness. Yeah, that's a slimy pit. That's a mire of mud. But he lifted us out of that, and hear this, set us free on a rock. A rock of what? Him, his promises, his way, his healing. And gave me, gave us a firm place to stand. Where's that firm place to stand? In his word, on his promises. Those things that are say yes and amen. That's the firm place to stand, not the thoughts that go through there. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> this thing, the enemy is in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, stand on his word. He put a new song in my mouth. Not the song of this isn't going to work or that isn't going to work or I'm never going to make it. The song of God is on my side. The song that says he's going to help me through. The song that says... God's got my back. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. You know what that trust is? God hears your cries of pain. He is your steady foundation for er when everything else falls apart. Have you been there? When everything's falling apart? Amen. Absolutely. But he's there for you. He's the foundation that's going to get you through that. You know what that trust is? That trust is, you know what? My plan isn't getting me anywhere, but God, I know your plan will. I'm going to, I am going to believe on your promises. I'm going to stick with you, Father. Isaiah 41.10. I have repeated this, repeatedly repeated this over my lifetime because of some things I've gone through. It says, so do not fear. Hello, what's one of the first things that happens in depression and hopelessness? Fear. Don't do it. Don't be afraid. For God is with you. Don't be dismayed. That's another word for despondent or hopelessness. Don't be dismayed for I am your God. Every single one of you on here. God makes it personal for you. It's not just this some God that scoops us all up together. He's making it personal in this. He's saying that I'm your God. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Put your name in there. I, I am with, put your name in there. Do not be dismayed for I am, put your name in there. I am blank, your God. I will strengthen, put your name in there. I will strengthen you and put your name in there. Help you. I will uphold you. Put your name in there. I will help hold you with my righteous right hand. He's going to get you through. He's going to get you through. Look up Isaiah 41.10 when we get off here. And read that verse and put your name in there. It means a whole lot different. It shows a whole lot different on the strength. Though your strength and my strength may be small, God's strength is more than enough to get us through. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your what? Anxiety on him because he cares for you. Y'all, any of y'all go fishing? I know I used to go fishing when my kids were little. Boy, I'd cast that fishing line just as far as I could out there to catch one of those fish. Why don't we do that with our anxiety? Cast it to heaven? It'd be a great idea. What trouble what troubles you matters to God. Hang on, let me say that again. 
what troubles you or me matters to God. So you may think it's not a big deal. It matters to God if it's troubling you. He wants to the shoulder, he wants to be the shoulder the bird to share the burden with you. He wants to be the shoulder that you can lean on. He wants to be the shoulder that will help you walk through. He wants to. You're not a burden. You're not a problem. You're not silly. He's not going to be upset with you. The religion I was taught when growing up, oh my goodness, I was positive God was going to come down and smack me. No, God is love. First John, period. John 14, 27, and I know I've said this a million times, but I'm going to say it again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of things the world like to give you for peace. <laughs> don't do that. Mm -mm. Do not let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. There's that fear again. You don't have to be afraid and you don't have to be troubled. God's peace can supernaturally transcend any troubles you face. Any of them. He just can. Trust in the Lord. This is another one that I had to go. When the one incident I talked about, I repeated this. And huh, he would have this verse pop up in the strangest places. Just to remind me to trust him. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about anything. And all of a sudden this verse shows up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not, what? On your own understanding. Hello. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. What does that look like? That path is going to be straight because you're walking it with him. Maybe it isn't as good as it should be yet. Maybe it's a little bit worse. Maybe it's a struggle to get through. But that path is going to be straight in his strength and his power to get through. Ask God to lead the way and he will direct the way you're supposed to go to be able to either heal or, or get over this or to be able to get through this or both or both. He's going to show you the way. Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded you? This is a command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. And Joshua is getting ready to fight a big battle there. Our battle many times is big too. Mentally, many times it's very big. He's right there. Don't be afraid. Be strong, be courageous, don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You don't have to be discouraged. He's going to get you through. Trust God. God is with you every step of the way, always and forever. Just because you're through one thing doesn't mean he's, oh, okay, we're done now. No. I walked with the Lord for 42 years now. Guess what? He's always been there. Every single time. Even when I forgot. Even when I wandered away. Guess who wandered? Wasn't him. It was me. It was me every time. He's always going to be there. Even if you feel guilty about going to him because you haven't gone to him. God, I'm so sorry. Will you help me? Well, yes, my child. He loves you that much. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know this one. For I know the thoughts, there's two versions. First, I'm going to do the King James Version. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Do you know God thinks about you? More than there are sand crystals, sand crystals on the beach. He thinks about you more often than that. Psalm 139, I think. For I know the thoughts that I think Toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. You know what that expected end is? His, his perfect plan for your life, his perfect way, 
his expectation, not ours. We get in so much trouble when we expect this or the other thing. Well, yeah, this is going to work this way. Uh, no. Mm, no. No, no. Or, oh, yeah, this should work. Yeah, no. I have a friend who uh, used to work on computers, and I loved uh, they came in to work on my computers at the church office, and they were, this was back with the floppy disk, you know, and you put it in, you hope the computer would give it back out. Well, this friend of mine would sit at the computer and work at it, and they would say, now, if I do this, you should do that, talking to the computer. And they, all the way through the, all the way through the fixing of whatever had to be fixed, they talked to the computer like that. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's what we all do. However, that doesn't work in life. You know, if I do this, that, and the other thing, this, that, and the other thing should work, right? Yeah, no, not always. God's expected in. God's plan. God's peace. That's where we're going to have victory when we walk with him and listen to his um, plan for us. His expected in is not mine, not yours, his plans. He doesn't think the way I think. He doesn't see the way I see. So it's for peace and not evil. Another version of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not disaster. Now, how do we say that when we see so many people suffering? So many people going through. Okay, yeah. He's still going to give them a future and a hope. Even if they are going through, that plan may be horrific, but he's going to work it out for his good. I know with me, there were two or three things that happened, and I could still be stuck in them. But he showed me one of the plans I had. I didn't go through, and I always asked him, I said, why, didn't I, why didn't I go through with that? It sounded like a perfectly good plan to me. <laughs> of course, he said, because you would have been tied to it. And you could not have ministered. Oh, okay. That's what I felt like he said. That gave me the peace on why I didn't go through with what I was planning. It was a, it was a business adventure. A bi business venture. And I never jumped on it. And then I saw this business start from somebody else. And it flourished exactly like I had seen. But no, that wasn't where God wanted me broke my heart a little bit that I saw this business venture take off that I had the vision for. But God said, no, I have another plan for you. This is part of it right here. So I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. Okay, I know you're thinking the disasters happening around this world. That's not part of his plan, Okay. A lot of the things that are happening around this world are because men don't always get along real well with men. And they make some silly decisions on how to attack one another. Viruses, illnesses, they are part of living this world. It, it's not the disaster that defines God. It is the plans for good to give us a future and a hope even through the disaster. Even during the disaster, even walking through the disaster, he still has a plan to give you a future and a hope. Regardless, his plans are for good, even in the midst of disaster. His plans will help us out or through the struggle that we're dealing with time and again. Even though you're struggling, God's making a new way. He's doing a new thing thing through the struggles and it's going to make a new life it's going to make a new he's going to make a new way through your illness he's going to make a new way through your relationship struggles he's going to make a new way through those financial issues he's going to make a new way regardless of what you're going through he's bigger than everything you've ever gone through and everything you ever will go through he doesn't change and he'll make a way where there seems to be no way He's bigger than that problem. He's bigger than the war, the massive destruction weather. He's bigger than the tremendous financial failures. He's bigger than the health issues. He's bigger than any family issues. He's bigger than anything we can go through. And he's willing to help us go through. He loves us. He wants to help us through. So if you're going through, I want to encourage you to reach out. 
reach out to him, grab a hold of him, encourage others to grab a hold of him. Don't do life alone. Oh, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Reach out to God and reach out to others. Seriously. That is the worst way to do that because you, we can get in some serious danger when we try and walk by ourselves. Please reach out. And then when you reach out, be honest with people what you need. And if the first two or three or four people aren't helping you, find some other people. It's not hopeless. It's not. And I know reaching out is hard. I get it. I don't do it well. I tell my closest friends. Now I'm telling you, if you don't hear from me, you know I'm going through. I'm terrible at that. But I'm getting better. I am getting better. Because there's people in my life that I can trust, that I can talk to. And they'll walk me through or they'll pray with me. And I love it. I love that. So, but it's taken me a while to gather that group of people. You know how it takes a village? Yeah. Takes a village to take care of me, too. I can guarantee it. You know, and sitting alone is how our mental struggles sometimes get worse. Keep reaching out until you find somebody that can help. Keep reaching out. Your doctors, your your hospital, your police stations, the Y. And there's absolutely everybody out there is going to help you. And if the first one doesn't, Get a hold of somebody else. Call the 988 Suicide Lifeline. I saw a documentary on them. They are amazing. They are amazing people. They walk with you. They talk with you. They check up on you. They have had some seriously good training. Psalm 73, 26 says, My health may fail. Not yet. My spirit may grow weak. Mm -hmm. But here's the good news. God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. God uses people to help you reach out. You are a valuable person. We need you around. We need you to walk with us. You're part of our family. You want, we want you to get better. We want you to walk in health and healing. We want you to get strong, mentally, physically, and emotionally. We love you. God loves you. Find people. Find God. Reach out. Reach out to him. He's right there waiting for you. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you for the people that are on now and later. I thank you that they're listening to this. I pray that you give them the strength to reach out to you, first of all, and that you bring people in their life that will help them walk through whatever they're walking through, Father. I thank you that even right now you see what's going on and you're going to touch and agree and help them, Father. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. If you feel this video has helped you, would you share it onto your page? Let us know how it's helped us by going to leaving a message in the comment box or by emailing me at fridayshope3 at gmail. You can watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel, which is all for also Friday's Hope. And if you haven't already, would you go to Friday's Hope Facebook page and hit um, like and follow? That's the best way to help this ministry. No, it's not going to ask you for money or anything. I just need so many followers to be able to um, air live on that page. So... Um, if you go to Friday's Hope page, I'd love for you to hit like and follow. That helped me out a lot. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you coming on tonight. And most of all, I know I, God loves you. You have a blessed evening. I pray you're able to get to church Sunday. But most of all, I pray that you strengthen your relationship with Jesus. I love you. God bless you.